Okay, because otherwise you will be minus the chair. I'll have to leave. I have to catch my flight. <clears throat> so uh, let me just wind up this session by saying, uh, this was the last technical session of the conference. Let me just wind up by saying, uh, there will always be glitches. It will not be a perfect law. If it were to be a perfect law, uh, then perhaps uh, a litigant would not require uh, the color court wallas. They'll go and argue before the, and, and it will be absolutely cut and dried. It, it will not be a perfect law. It is not a perfect law. But, but having said that, despite the problems that uh, Anand has uh, pointed out and uh, the issues that uh, uh, Praveen Anand had also pointed out, and, and throughout the sessions, people have been talking about the infirmities of some missed opportunities. Uh, this law is a quantum leap from 1999. It's, it's been 13 years in the making. It has covered substantial ground which was at one time never thought would be covered. From a 30-member core group which never met or which met, uh, then you would have all the lawyers articulating their client's interest. So Microsoft was present in that core group by not being present. Okay. And similarly, there were other such clients who were being represented by not being present. From that 30-member group, we came down to a uh, three-member drafting committee, and then from three-member drafting committee, actually it turned out to be a two-member drafting committee, which uh, worked very secretively over a long weekend, uh, not revealing to their families where they were in that kind of <laughs> secrecy. And we came up with a draft that was finally put up on the website, and then it went through iterations. And um, from 2006, after it was uh, put up on the uh, website and, and uh, the first draft of the uh, amendments was put into circulation between the ministries. To 2012, bulk of the work has been done by the gentleman sitting there. Uh, he does not uh, admit to having seen any pirated uh, movies or some, uh, listened to any pirated music. I don't believe him. But let me tell you, what you need to believe is that if Raghavinder had not been there, uh, it is his diligence, it is his hard work, it is his commitment. Then what Professor Gopalakrishnan had been talking about, the lobbying. That lobbying could have overridden a lot of the gains that have now been made in these amendments. So um, let me ask you, in all fairness, to give a round of applause for this gentleman. <laughs> And then we, we need, needed to thank, but they are too numerous to be thanked. So what we would say, we also need to uh, have a round of applause for Professor Gopalakrishnan. He, he, he talked about the lobbying, but it also is an epitome of how honesty of purpose can thwart any kind of dishonest lobbying. And despite the principal director not being there, despite the exhaustion of rights clause not being there in the form that uh, would have, I mean, to most people it would have made sense. Uh, despite not being there, we look at so many other things that are there and we say, okay, fine, in all, in all due respect to everyone, we have done something. Let us see how it pans out over the next uh, half a decade or maybe a decade. And then we come back and then we re-examine it and when we see maybe a few course corrections along that. So uh, we have, uh, with this we end this session. Thank you very much. Thanks uh, to uh, my two colleagues who are eager to see me off now. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. So we're not so eager to see you off. Please don't say that. Um, uh, you told me my cab is ready. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Um, we just like to um, we request all of you to accept a token of appreciation. So we'll start with Mr. Ashil Fowler. And Mr. Anand Padmanabhan. Mr. Madhukar Sinha. And finally, uh, Mr. Amirbhan.
we also have a few announcements to make. First of all, we just want everyone to know that Mr. Anand Padmanabhan's book is now sold out. And uh, we, hope that, we hope that those of you who didn't buy it go out and buy it in full price now. And um, secondly, uh, everyone uh, who requires participation certificates will get them from the register desk at the main entrance and uh, finally now I'd request Shamnad sir to give some parting words and then Sai to deliver the vote of thanks. Thank you Madhukar, uh, you're off I see, Th thanks for, uh, Madhukar always, uh, you know when you put him as chair you get the most interesting sessions which is why we requested him to come back and chair this one. Um, Anand is also left, Anand is here. Anand, so you know the obligation back, since your book sold, donate a few to a library before you leave. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is my copy. <laughs> what can I say? I think, I think it was a terrific two days uh, of, of just uh, intense, passionate discussion uh, around a variety of issues and, uh, uh, and you know, I'm so glad that we put this program together. We put it quite late in the day uh, and the trigger really came from the students, uh, the NUGS Law Review and IPTLS. Uh, and I really have to thank them, you know, really start by thanking them for triggering this initiative uh, and it's paid off so well uh, that we had uh, this extremely interesting round of discussion, uh, different themes, uh, different perspectives uh, and one of the aims really was to get across a wide uh, um, mix of stakeholders that could come and present their views because that's what copyright essentially is, I think, for a long time, the way we've studied it and the way we've understood it as lawyers uh, has been in a rather technical, formalistic, sort of legal framework. Uh, and you can see, especially from the last panel discussion and some of the others that followed, that the more interesting news always come from the non-lawyers. I think both Ashil and uh, uh, even our uh, dear friend from Fiki, Sheetal, uh, made a rather impassioned plea for uh, preventing the chores, uh, you can see that, I mean, she was apprehensive. She said, you know, how can I speak to a bunch of lawyers? I said, you know, lawyers need to hear non-law stuff because the law is not, uh, uh, you know, is, is, is not a formal dogmatic procedure. The, the content of the law has to come from outside. And we see that increasingly in copyright. Unless I know how the industry is functioning, unless I know uh, what incentives operate, the psychology of a creator, um, how the market works, people aggregate content, how people commercialize it, uh, how people act as intermediaries, uh, how the market responds, um, I cannot formulate legal norms. And I'm sure that uh, the policy, the two key policy makers who are here with us today will bear me out on that, both Mr. Raghavinder as well as Professor Nas Gopalakrishnan, that you cannot wear your simple lawyer's hat. You have to have a sense uh, of, you have to be multidisciplinary. Right? You have to have a very keen economic sense, a very keen sociological sense. Uh, maybe anthropological, because these are all, you know, copyright goes to creativity, copyright goes to how we regulate our lives, uh, um, copyright go touches a whole variety of other facets uh, in our existence uh, that we'd be uh, the poorer for it if we didn't, if we just looked within, you know, the Copyright Act and so many, so many sections, and we just studied that and were content, because you, you, you would, you'd get one thousandth of the picture uh, that you were meant to get. Uh, and I think this exercise was, was, was an attempt also get, uh, you know, to really get our students to think out of the lawyer box a little bit because uh, tomorrow the, the wars, the fights, uh, you know, and, and you can see it happening even now, are not just going to be around interpretation. It's, it's really going to be around the formulation of policy. Right? So when you, when you go out as lawyers tomorrow and when you go out, uh, you know, representing clients and, and when we had, you know, some mentions of uh, clients that were doing advocacy on I mean, lawyers doing advocacy on behalf of clients before the core committees, but that's going to be a large part of the game. Really, how do you formulate policy? If you want to formulate policy, uh, it's not enough to just interpret sections because you don't have a section. I mean, you're, you're basically arguing for either a new law or an amendment, and, and your argument has to be premised uh, on, on very clear policy goals uh, and, on, and very clear arguments that have to draw from a variety of disciplines outside of the law. Uh, and I'm glad that uh, many of our speakers touched on those strictly non-technical uh, legal facets uh, that informed many of these amendments. Um, so I want to really thank all our wonderful speakers and panelists for giving us such an such a intellectual extravagance, if I can call it that, for the last two days uh, in just helping us think through many of these issues, uh, helping us get a
flavor of what went on behind the scenes, uh, what went on in front of the scenes, uh, the mixture that we now have on the table and what it's going to look like uh, a couple of years from now, the impact on industry, the impact on society. I want to thank our audience for being very patient with us uh, over two days. We've not gone according to schedule at all, but that's the beauty of it. That's, you know, that uh, this, this is India. We have to uh, do the little jugads uh, along the way to make our programs happen, and that's the richness of it. That's the beauty of it. Um, so thank you for bearing with us uh, and, and sitting through these two days. Um, I want to thank the Ministry of HRD for uh, continuously supporting these programs, making it possible. Uh, but, sir, I still have to tell you that despite combining our two budgets, uh, with my budget and Professor Energy's budget, we still found it very difficult, uh, as, uh, as he will also bear me out so kindly in your next, uh, whenever it's coming out, the next norms, please increase the budget for our conference, because we had to run to one or two external sponsors uh, to just fill in the gaps uh, right at the end. It's impossible to do a two or three day good session. Uh, and there was some speakers that came in at the last minute, uh, unfortunately, you know, we had to uh, really rely on their good sense and good heart and tell them, look, we can't fund your travel, but would you still come here? And there, and there are plenty of you out here who did that for us. We're very grateful uh, because we really didn't have the funds. Uh, and so many traveled on their own expense. Uh, but in future, at least, I hope that um, those, of, those, of, those of you who are coming to participate in this discussion and who are contributing uh, to the future of this endeavor, uh, that we'd be able to take care of your travel and hospitality. I want to thank Kane as partners for stepping in at the last moment and, and contributing uh, a significant sum to us that, that enabled this conference. Uh, Professor Ishwar Bhatt, our Vice Chancellor, uh, who was here through the afternoon but had to leave, uh, for supporting this uh, again on short notice and, and ensuring that we had the auditorium and, and several other facilities at the university. Uh, Professor Gopalakrishnan for uh, immediately agreeing to partner uh, on this program. Uh, and, and for lending all support and of course uh, for those of you uh, uh, who were here yesterday you'll notice that the theme for the conference the, the uh, you know he'd set the tone very well with his uh, initial presentation really laying down the framework uh, of the amendments what went on behind what are the policy rationales where the gaps were, what the government was really attempting to do uh, and it was good that today we had the session start kicked off by Mr. Raghavender uh, who again gave us a sense of how these amendments really came about so thank you sirs. Um, the biggest thanks always to the students. Uh, I think a fabulous, fantastic team, as, as most of you will attest to. Uh, really, I mean, you know, we have no role to play in this. It, it is the strength of these institutions always, it's students. Uh, and I just hope that we retain the space for giving, you know, for enabling them to do what they're good at. I mean, they're just wonderful. Uh, so Sai Vinod, uh, in, in particular, I mean, I just mentioned a couple of names, but there are several others. Uh, but Sai Vinod, uh, is he here? Take a bow. As you can see from his travel state, <laughs> the boy hasn't slept in <laughs> days. Uh, so he's been working around the clock. In fact, he's the one uh, who pushed us to have this conference. He said, uh, I have a team of 10 people and we need to do something. Um, so he wasn't satisfied that he'd already done an IPSA competition. He wanted something more. So I said, Sai, if you can do it, you know, I'm behind you. And uh, Amba Kak. IPTLS uh, and the law review as well. So she was the crossover bridge between both the student societies uh, that actually were responsible for this. So thank you very much. Jemini Vyas. Jemini uh, is also here. Vasuda, again, not part of any of the societies, but I think uh, Ivanod's popularity ensured that uh, we got a lot of his batchmates because somebody, somebody rightly told me, he said, how did it take the fifth years to work on this? <laughs> Fifties never do any work. I mean, it's a holiday year for them, <laughs> right? So it was one of those rare conferences where actually the fifth years did work. But I think that's because of, you know, I don't know, arm twisting or whatever twisting. You know, people accuse me of it, but uh, I think there was considerable at this end as well. Um, yeah, excellent job. Uh, part of the law review. I mean, I'm just talking to the people who I see around here. Uh, Nimisha, I don't know if Smaran is here, but. Uh, uh, yeah, a couple of them. I mean, just a couple of names, but they give you the longer list of people who really helped out. Uh, and of course, I want to thank the, the support staff, Uttamda and the others, for ensuring that uh, we had a good sound system. I, I really want to, I mean, those of you who came in last night would, would, have, would have witnessed the eighth wonder of the world, <laughs> if I could call it that. I mean, Arnab Roy, uh, who was my research associate with the IP chair, had done a fantastic job 
really recreate i mean really creating a very very creative ground uh, on which he, he he showcased a wide variety of local talent including the santali dance uh, the bowl singer some pottery some fishnet weaving uh, he got us a nice ride to a nice little small island off the field we were in so fantastic night he uh, provided the full moon he provided the full moon as well ashil's yeah. accusing you of now controlling the moon as well so you're better than king canute you can control the tides and the moon um, so so yeah so i i think you know while all of us really went out and spoke and pontificated on creativity and what the triggers are and how the copyright act either fosters or doesn't foster creativity adnan actually went out there and did the creative thing right so i think there's a lot to be said for that action though we speak louder than words so thank you arnab uh, manavda again from the ip chair and others from the ip chair that contributed to this uh, and yeah that's about this that i have I've missed out anyone uh, my apologies but i hope that uh, the larger vote of thanks from sai uh, would cover up all of that so thank you all uh, once again very much uh, for being with us and and for contributing to this rich discussion we hope that uh, all the panelists and the others uh, who presented here will will convert these to papers that we can then publish because the whole point is not just to limit this these these insights and it was seriously good insights of two days to just a limited audience here but to really get it uh, across to a much wider cross section of the audience that can read uh, these things benefit from it not least our judges because i think our, our judges really need to see uh, the kind of interpreted issues that we've discussed here so that cases come up uh, they have some guidance in terms of these writing and that's the hope that uh, you know once the nujs law review issue comes out and once uh, we have a book uh, and i want to thank sumit malik again for agreeing to publish the book uh, uh, he represents ebc uh, that we we hope that once we get uh, these uh, and and i hope that ebc will set the norms for the progressive clauses with the authors right we need to we need to work on that as well uh, and <laughs> so so that some of what we see here can be implemented <laughs> right then and there. uh and uh, so once we get this book and this journal out the hope is that it can it can inform much more informed discussion for the future uh, for all of us for our students as policy makers as just people who think about these issues so thank you all thank you very much and may i invite sai to please deliver the more extensive work good evening everyone first of all thanks a lot to all who have come here today and all have been here for the last two days it's been a really good great experience for all of us we've learned a lot of things because of this thank you so much uh, firstly uh thanks all the all the speakers for, for the two days of engaging discussion that we had it's been really, like i hope everyone taking something out of this whole thing. and from um, all the participants from industry from law firms from students outside in uj and students from our college thank big thank you for all of you people and i would like to thank professor ganesh gopalakrishnan and you said for assisting us for providing the necessary funding to make this even happen and K rajendra kumar from kns partners uh and i would all like to thank nujs law review for coordinating with all the authors and and on in fact there's a special issue coming out in january uh and there's a book that's being published by ebc and sumit mang and big thank you for sumit book big thanks for sumit malik sir he's given us 80 bare acts of the latest amendments I would request uh, Sumit Mansur to please come on stage once. Thank you, sir. Oh, uh, I will thanks for our Vice Chancellor Professor Ishwar Bhatt and Registrar Dr. Surajit Mukhopadhyay for letting us have this event and ensure that all the necessary requisitions and permissions were given. They have never seen a party like what we've seen last night. Thank you so much. Oh, uh, my dear. I would also request Akshay and Ravina to please come on stage. So Akshay, so assumed he just assumed that he's responsible for it and did, and <laughs> and he's then like 